I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. And I'm Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And we thought it might be really helpful for all the parents out there, and even the, a lot of the students and athletes, uh, to demonstrate today what happens during a concussion. And uh, So basically we're going to cover two things. One, what happens during a concussion, and why is it really important for you to allow uh, your brain to heal after you've had a concussion. So, Brad, have you ever had a concussion? No, not that I'm aware of, All but right. uh, I know they're really looking at it closely in the high school these days. As a matter of fact, my daughter is a freshman volleyball player, and she had to have a, a screen test to get a baseline of where her mind is working with some memory skills and things like that. She said it's actually pretty difficult uh, when you're doing well, and then they take that test again if you do fall down, uh, you know, have a possible concussion to determine if it is a concussion or not, and if you need to seek medical help. So it's very popular across it's the country. Great, it's great that they're uh, paying a lot more attention to it because it, it, I think it was a, a kind of a problem that they were ignoring for a long time. Right. All right, so what we're going to demonstrate here is uh, this is going to be the brain, uh, a representation of the brain. Normal brain weighs about three pounds, mine weighs, you know, about two. <laughs> Mine's four and a half. Oh, four and a half, of course. Somehow I knew that was going to happen. Uh, the brain is encased in the skull, and it, within the skull is cerebral spinal fluid. And the cerebral spinal fluid, in addition to a number of other things, actually is supposed to try to help uh, protect the brain a little right, bit, right. Uh, provide some cushioning. So we're going to this this glass is going to represent the skull. That's an egg, by the way. And that's an egg. Did right. I say an egg? Uh, no, I don't think we mentioned it, but you know, All right, I babe. think we should. You know, we use our, our model as an egg. And the brain can be as fragile as an egg. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my God. I always wanted to say it's that. It's worse and worse. Yeah. So again, we got the brain and the cerebral spinal fluid. And what we're going to show you here is what happens during an impact. Now, um, what you need to understand though is it's not like you need to have a direct blow to the head to get a concussion. Uh, during whiplash, your head is whipped back and forth. Uh, and, and sometimes people during football, let's say, you know, Jared Allen, a, a defensive player from the Viking, or from the Vikings, were to hit Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers a quarterback right, right. from the Green Bay Packers, which would be a shame, wouldn't it? But if he hit him hard and and he snapped his head or his head snapped and hit the ground, uh, that right. could, could result in, in in a concussion. Yeah, so, and the point is, you don't have to literally impact your head to have a concussion, and you can have a helmet on and easily get a concussion as they do in football. Now, in fact, I'm going to bring up a little French terminology here. Um, what we learned when we were in school is that uh, when you have a brain injury, you actually can get, when you get hit like that, there's coup and contra-coup. And I'm going to put up a diagram on the screen right now, and it shows you uh, uh, with an injury, you can actually, uh, when you whip your head, you're going to get an uh, impact on the area on the front of the brain, and if you look at the, um, the diagram there, you can also get a, what is called injury on the other side, which is the contra coup. So it's coup, injury on the front, and contra coup on the back, and I'll show you in a minute what, why that happens. Is that like so, a haiku, Bob? Now we're back, by the way. No, it's not like haiku, Brad, but it's, it's, I'm sure it's all French. All right, so let's demonstrate what happens when the brain begins to slosh back and forth. Okay, so uh, someone gets hit. Maybe a direct hit, maybe it's just their head uh, gets uh, you know, knocked back and forth. And that's just going to be like this. Okay? Well, what happens with that? Let's take a look. I can get this up. Now, now Bob shook that back and forth as if it was a car accident rolling downhill. But, you know, this can happen in just a one hit where it just slashed once as well. And I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up. But there is a slight crack in the egg. Oh yeah, yes, yep, right here. And I really, I, I, Lindsay's not picking it up, but you're going to have to take our word for it that there is a crack in the egg. Um, and what happens now, you know, by guidelines uh, for concussions and stuff, they're, they're going to want you to, to rest and let that brain heal. And it will heal if you let, let it, you know, give it enough time. But if you don't, if you go right back into it, Okay, so you didn't allow the brain to heal. You, you jump right back into football or whatever sport you're in, even soccer or uh, whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and here we go. We, you can hit again. And now, pull it out. I think even the camera's going to pick this one up. Ooh, yeah. We've got some serious crackage. Right. 
So, so there's going to be more damage. Right. And, and, you know, and, and then it can get to the point where the damage is irreversible. And, and each time it's very likely that the damage takes less impact and you'll get more damage as a result. So it's kind of an exponential thing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so that's why, like Aaron Rodgers had that uh, last year when he got hit in that right. game. They held him out and took him out of a game and everything. Uh, exactly. And, and he looked fine on the sidelines, but uh, they got to be cautious with that type of thing. In this next section, we're going to talk about uh, some of the symptoms. Just go over a brief uh, a list of symptoms that you want to look for um, after. But actually, this is not something that you would be doing per se, uh, as far as making the final determination of when someone's going back in, that would have to be done by a doctor. Right, exactly. So just remember, you don't want this to happen to your brain. Ooh, look at that. Can you see that, Lindsay? All right, some of the symptoms that you may experience uh, with a concussion are as follows, and Brad and I have a couple lists here, so we'll try not to double up here, but uh, one is, the most common one is a headache, um, or a feeling of pressure in the head. That's, right. that's the most common one. Uh, along with that dizziness and general fatigue, when I mean, you shouldn't feel fatigue, but you, you do anyways. Uh, temporary loss of consciousness, uh, confusion or feeling as if you're in a fog. Concentration problems, you know. That would be along the same line. Exactly, way. yeah. A lot of these kind of overlap each other. Um, changes in personality. Sure. Uh, nausea or vomiting. I've seen that on kids already. Right. Effect change, anxiety and depression. I mean, yeah. you know, so many psychological things obviously are dealing with the brain. So, uh, yeah. these are things that if you see these changes, uh, you're going to not want to ignore them. Right. You know, you know your, your child, you know your spouse, and if you start seeing something that doesn't fit, uh, you, you should be alerted to that fact. Um, slurred speech, which I always think of with the Rocky movies. I mean, no wonder Rocky, you know, he spoke. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, it kind of all fits, doesn't it? Uh, fatigue. I kind of like that movie. I did too, they were just on, so. Uh, I think, anything else we're missing? No. Sleep disturbances? Oh, another one is, uh, you mentioned uh, your taste and smell can be off. Oh, sure. And that's actually in 5% of the cases, I believe, I had read. Um, sensitivity, sensitivity to lighter noise. Um, lots of things that can, that can occur with that. But uh, again, be taken very seriously and, and not to be ignored. Right, talk to the coaches, get to your doctor if you're concerned because you do not want to uh, ignore it and have a real serious problem in the long run. You don't want to have a broken egg. 